If you're ready to experience more peace and joy in your life, if you want to feel more comfortable in your own skin, and if you're ready to discover and expand on your energetic gifts and personal power, you're in the right place. So here's your host, Kelly Sparta. Welcome back to Spirit Guides. I'm your host, Kelly Sparta. I'm here as always with my co-host and best friend in Boquete, Catherine Lauren Jay, and we are both spiritual business coaches, and we are here to talk to you about how to bring your spiritual work into your work world and how to make that work well. So work, work, work. So, all right. So today we're going to talk about imposter syndrome. I think I can. I think I can. I don't know. I'm kind of not sure if I'm good enough, but we're going to try and I'm going to put on a face that says I've got everything under control. I'm perfect. It's all good. Sound familiar? Yeah. I think we've all been there. So imposter syndrome, you want to you want to take off on that one and start with that since I talked so much in the last episode? <laughs> yeah, sure, sure. Yeah, I could totally do that. I know you can. I know I can. I know I can. So so I want to say that imposter syndrome is so common. You know, I think that for so many entrepreneurs, we look to other people and not just entrepreneurs, but just like life in general we look to other people and it looks like they have got it all figured out. They know what they're doing, but inside of us, there's this like feeling of like, what the F I don't, I don't know what's going on here. I don't know how to do this. I don't know. You know, I just, I feel like an imposter. And so the first thing I want to say about it is if you're feeling that way, good job, high five, you're a human being. Cause we all feel that way from time to time. So that imposter syndrome is is really a common thing that you're going to experience any time you start to step outside of or get to the edge of the life that you have known. So anytime you maybe are going to try something different, you're going to choose to show up differently in life, you're going to go for a different kind of job, you're going to do something different in your business, you're going to make a move. Anytime you do something different than what you have already been doing, your subconscious mind is going to feel threatened by it. And so it's going to want to keep you in the comfort zone. And so it feels threatened by it because it's unknown. So our subconscious mind doesn't know the difference between the unknown of, you know, making a different move in your business to the unknown of going and trying to pet a saber toothed tiger. So it perceives them both as dangerous and threatening. And so, of course, it's going to raise up all of its its tactics to try to just get you to stay in doing what you've always done, right? It's like that expression, the devil you know is better than the devil you don't. So it, you know, might pull up voices like, you know, what do you what do you think you're doing? Who do you think you are? What are other people going to think about you? You can't do this. Like, oh, look at that time in the past that you failed. You're an idiot. You know, what what if it goes wrong? What about your kids? How are you going to pay your mortgage? Like it just brings all of it out to try to get you to to avoid doing that. And so all of those little subconscious voices are going to result in you feeling like I, 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 geez, I feel like a fake, right? I feel like a fake. Yeah. Can I jump in for two seconds? Absolutely. I just want to, I want to define some terms for people because we've used the term comfort zone. And Mm. one of the things that I hear from people all the time is like, well, you know, why, why would I want to leave my comfort zone? I'm like, because most people's comfort zones are not actually comfortable. Mm -hmm. They're the devil, you know, versus the devil, you don't. And Mm -hmm. they're actually usually quite uncomfortable. Mm -hmm. And so you're, you're used to feeling like you're not good enough. If you've come out of an environment where you were told over and over again, that you just didn't measure up, you will be comfortable with, with being uncomfortable in that way. You will be comfortable with being, uh, you know, with the thought that you are never good enough. And so this is the other piece of the puzzle is that, yeah, anytime you're stepping out of a regular space, into an unknown space, you're going to trigger that imposter syndrome. However, if you are a person who came out of a 
challenged background where, you know, your, your childhood was not supportive, you may feel that way all the time. Mm-hmm. And it doesn't matter how good you are at it, how much you've done it for how long, how much evidence you have to prove that you are a kick-ass person doing kick-ass work, you will still have imposter syndrome because your inherent inner dialogue says, I'm never good enough, no matter how much I do. I can work five times harder than everybody else, get more done in a day than most people get done in a week, and I will still feel like I'm not measuring up. Mm-hmm. And that will create imposter syndrome as well, if that's your inner dialogue dialogue. And so those those are things that can actually create it as well outside of the new environment concept, right? Yeah. Yeah, absolutely, and, Kelly. Really good points. Yeah. And and this is where, and I love your that you started with the comparing your insides to other people's outsides is totally not okay. Because think about yourself there for a minute. You are putting on this great mask and you're saying, I got it all together. Everything's okay. I am the person who, who you know, I have it all done, right? And on the outside, everybody else looks at you and thinks that's true. And on the inside, you're going, I'm never good enough, right? So imagine what's happening in other people's heads. It is totally unfair to be judging yourself by their outsides because they're likely doing something similar to what you're doing. So give yourself a break and let yourself be human. Okay. We'll start with that. Mm-hmm. All right. Now I'll let you talk again. I just oh. had to stick my two cents in. Yeah, no, no, no. I, I <laughs> love that. Absolutely. Right. And that. so I want to talk a little bit more about kind of stepping outside of the comfort zone. And the reason that I find, so, so in the work that I do, we work with the vision, which is, you know, we've talked about this in previous podcasts, which is what would you love? And that what would you love is actually a way to tap into your soul's purpose for your life, your dharma, your direction. And you might not get it like right out of the bat, but it's going to give you at least a direction to move into. And so the what would I love is is going to, by definition, be outside of the comfort zone. And so maybe right now, my comfort zone is that I feel like a piece of crap and a total failure and a loser and a fake. And, you know, I have this imposter syndrome going on. The what I would love is to actually feel confident and to feel like at peace with who I am. And so it's going to require that you step outside the comfort zone of where you are, which is the, the the devil that you do know. So one of the beautiful aspects of working in this way is that any time you start to move towards that vision of what would I love, it's calling you to step outside the comfort zone. It's going to automatically elicit those limiting subconscious beliefs. It's going to elicit the things that you're saying to yourself that are so deep, you're not even usually typically aware of them. It's going to elicit the things that are screaming into your head, you know, on a daily basis. The beauty of that is you don't need to go digging to find them. Right. Because what you look for, you find, and the universe brings you back that in abundance. So we don't want to go looking for the 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 limiting beliefs because they will come up anyway. So when you're asking, what would I love? And you're starting to take actions and those actions could be thinking a different thought. It could actually be taking an action. It could be making a decision. There's so many ways that we can do that. It's It's requiring you to just step outside that comfort zone. And then all the stuff that's keeping you where you are right now is going to show up. So we can call it imposter syndrome, but a twist on that, just a language calibration on that is to instead label it pioneering energy. Like, can you, Kelly, feel the difference when you, so if you, and and listeners, like, so imagine right now you're saying, oh, I have imposter syndrome and then try on, oh, I have pioneering energy. Yeah, for a new for a new engagement that works. I I tend to use identity shift as the mm-hmm. as the piece that we are labeling it as is mm-hmm. to say, look, I'm stepping into a new version of myself. Mm-hmm. I'm letting go of the parts of myself that no longer fit mm-hmm. in this new me, right? Mm-hmm. So there's a process that people go through when they do that, and it's called foundational deconstruction. That's what I call it. So 
But the idea is that you're literally ripping out the foundation on which you stand as a person and and allowing it to re-coalesce. And so I, when I say allowing, people try to like really solidify it very quickly after they've pulled it out and because it's disorienting, right? You know, if you, if you do a small one, it's just a little disorienting, you know, but if you do a big one and you rip out all the foundations, I did that back in the early 2000s and there was like three weeks where I was unsafe to drive. I would walk into doorways because I didn't know where my edges were. I'd get out of the shower with shampoo in my hair because all of my rote activities were gone. <laughs> and I had to be consciously paying attention to what I was doing to make anything happen because I, I literally just pulled everything out. And then I just waited for things to come back into being. And, and when you can wait for it and allow it to happen, you're in a much better position because what we think we can see for ourselves in the future is limited by who we are now, mm -hmm. right? And so when you can just pull it out and just sit with curiosity and wait for it to evolve, you allow your, si your higher self to come in and make that new foundation for you. And if you are like me, you, you will probably be surprised at some things that got left out. I mean, a cornerstone for me was making sure everything was perfect. I wouldn't let anything go out the door unless it was absolutely perfect. And that did not go back into the new foundation. Not that I am not quality assurance oriented. I am, but I'm, I'm not making myself be superhuman anymore. I'm allowing myself to be human. And there, the mm. perfection piece was absolutely in conflict with being human. And so it just didn't make it back into the new foundation. And I was shocked when I looked at it and went, wait, it's not there, but this feels good. And that's okay. And hmm, okay, maybe I should look at the perfectionist stuff, right? Mm -hmm. This is the way that a foundational deconstruction works. And when you step into a massively new way of being, then you end up needing to do some significant identity shift and and imposter syndrome is is actually a function of not having stepped into that new identity not having allowed yourself to be the person that you have that you have or are becoming it's a you holding on to an old definition of yourself whilst being the new person mm. yeah yeah and you know what that brings to mind for me is the way that the way that transformation happens, right? So there's generally two ways that it can happen. And, and the, you know, one of them is through that, like you said, the foundational deconstruction. So that would be like a really intense, emotionally intense event. So like a retreat, you know, uh, you know, kind of an in-person or virtual really intensive experience where you just, it's kind of like you mix everything up and you rip it out and you, you're holding that space. And then the other way it can happen is through the repetition. So repetition over time. So those are two ways that you actually start to shift your identity. And, and, and a combination of both is really, in my opinion, is really ideal. And so we, I think we work a little bit differently, it's very similarly, but differently at the same time, which is like so fun. Is what I love about us. Yes. I know. Right. So, <laughs> so for me, what we do is we look at, well, what would I love? And instead of going in and kind of like ripping out the pieces, we're actually planting and nurturing and growing the newness and just naturally letting those other ones either die off or or generally what happens is that they come up, they try to fight for their existence. So we release through pattern, repattern them, you know, kind of mentally and then also energetically so that we're not, so that we're focusing more of the intention, the energy on what is it that I'm creating? And then how do I step into being that version of me, knowing that the pieces that don't fit, the pieces that are not a vibrational match will by definition come up to release and repattern. So I don't need to, again, I don't need to, to look for them, but I do need to just be aware of, of when they're coming up so that I can, you know, kind of prune them out, repattern them, release them. Yeah. 
And I want to say that, yes, sometimes you could do a foundational deconstruction at a retreat, uh, but I've got students in my program right now who are doing it all by themselves on their own at home. And that happens too. So the the other thing, and I, I love the moving, you know, step by step and, you know, continuing to take action and be in choosing who you want to become and, and taking action in that regard, right? The for letting go. And yes, repatterning is great for that. And we do some of that as well. I also have done rituals where people do funerals for their former selves, right? And you're like, if you're making a massive shift, then saying, okay, this, this person is gone and we are going to eulogize them. We are mm-hmm. going to bury them. We are going to, you know, put a gravestone, whatever, to be able to say this person is has passed and the new person is me and I am releasing all of the stuff that kept that person as who they were. Mm -hmm. So that's another option you have for letting go as well. I love retreat. I love ritual as well. I'm a big ritual. Love ritual. Love ritual. Yeah. Yeah. Ritual is ritual is the way that we speak to our subconscious and unconscious minds. It Mm -hmm. is an archetypal process that steps us into a universal source energy that has been done for generations. It's a connection to our ancestors. It's a connection to the land. It's a connection to higher power and and to archetypal energy. It's it's fantastic for doing this kind of work. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. So Mm -hmm. anything else about imposter syndrome you want to you want to bring up? I want to share a personal story where I was this kind of like major aha moment where with the imposter syndrome. So I, in a previous version of me, had a business, was in um, not doing what I'm doing now is a different, totally different thing and had grown it to, it was a multiple seven figure business. So it was doing really well, getting awards, you know, doing all the kind of like quote unquote right things. And yet I always felt like I didn't know what I was doing. Like there was always this piece of me that was like, oh, well, I don't have the MBA or I'm not like a CPA or I don't have this or I don't have that or I'm not an engineer. So I don't, I don't really know what I'm doing here. And the, the piece that it just like, it just like God smacked me in the head was when one of our clients, we had this major $100 million, multiple $100 million client, and they went bankrupt. And they had all of the people who should have known, who, and this is me air quoting, who should have known, right? Right. They had the fancy titles and the this is and the that's and the that's, and they still went, they went bankrupt. And there was this when this happened, and there was a there was a fallout on our business because they owed us a large receivable. So that super sucked. And we had to to close it and stuff. So that was not that was not easy. But what it did for me was this realization that nobody actually really, really knows what they're doing. Yes. Right. It's an experiment. We're in this experiment. So what would it be like to just let go of hanging on to the identity of imposter syndrome and instead, you know, use some of that language that Kelly and I shared that year, I'm in an identity shift, I'm up leveling, I have, I'm a pioneer, right? I'm an adventurer, I'm going to the moon here. And to find a way to, when you feel those feelings and notice that, you know, kind of story going on in your head to instead reframe it in a way that's more empowering to you. Yeah. I'm a big fan of saying, no, I don't know that, but I can figure it out. Mm -hmm. Right. That's what I leaned into my entire career. And I've been running businesses. I mean, I started, (laughs) I started actually running my first business when my, my friend disappeared because she was on Prozac. I think we talked about this and she just disappeared. And at 19, I was running a payroll company and I had no idea how to run a company. I didn't know anything about business. And I had a bunch of employees that I was responsible for, and I was getting paid $6 and 25 cents an hour to run this payroll company (laughs) because I was supposed to be an administrative assistant. I was not supposed to be the person running the company, but when she left, there was, there was a void and somebody had to fill it. And so I learned very quickly 
that I didn't know anything, but that I could figure a lot of stuff out if I just sat down and started reading some books and going on. Mm -hmm. Well, online wasn't a thing at the time. It was 1989. So it was a long time. That's dial up for those of you who are. Yeah, no doubt. (laughs) That's and, a well, dial-up we, sound. We didn't even have that. So <laughs> I didn't get my first dial-up internet <laughs> connection until the mid-90s, I think. But uh, yeah, we were, I was just flying by the seat of my pants and I had no idea what I was doing. And, you know, one of the things that, that I learned to lean into, because I'm 19, I'm running this, this company, I got employees who are 35 and 40 years old, and I'm like running this company and uh, And one of the things that I learned to lean into is I can figure it out. And so, you know, nobody knows it all. Nobody. I used to train real estate agents years ago in the 90s. I was a real estate trainer. And I would tell them all the time, they're like, well, I have to know it all. I'm like, then you should not do this because I had been, I had sold houses for seven years at that point. And I had done hundreds of transactions and there were still things that I was running into that I didn't know and had to figure out. They said, you know, if you wait to till you know it all, you're never going to get started because mm-hmm. that's just not the case. And that's mm-hmm. true in every business you ever run is you're always going to be learning, especially if you're doing anything online. Every every 18 months, everything online changes. It's insane. So, you know, this there's no knowing at all. There isn't. I've been studying spiritual growth and personal transformation and you know, all of this stuff for 50 years and there's still stuff that I don't know. (laughs) Okay. Mm -hmm. The more you learn, the more, you know, you don't know. Right. Mm -hmm. So Mm -hmm. let it go, you know, just lean into your adaptability and your, your willingness to learn. Because if you're listening to this podcast, you are definitely a lifelong learner who loves to suck up information as fast as it possibly will go into your brain. I know you, I see the, the pile of books next to your bed, all partially read and the pile of other pile of books next to your your chair in the living room, all partially read. I know, I know. So, mm-hmm. you know, if you, if you know that about yourself, you can find anything. You can yeah. figure it out. It's not a big deal. Let it go. It's all good. Yeah. You got this. We believe in you. All right. And on that, I think we should wrap just, up. Yeah, one yeah, more thing. Okay. I, one more, just one very small thing. Yes. So speaking to kind of what you shared earlier in terms of the sense of if somebody, even if they're not, you know, kind of trying something new or in that pioneering energy or stepping outside the comfort zone, if there's just this feeling of like, I'm fundamentally, I don't know what I'm doing or fundamentally flawed, something wrong with me just as a human being. I want you to know that most human beings feel that way. Yes. Like the majority of people on the planet feel like that. And I know for me, when I first heard that, it was this like, oh, what? It's not just me. It's not just you. No. We all feel that way. So you can let that go too. Just know that it means you're a human. Good job. Good job. Good job. Right. Good job, you. <laughs> okay. All right. And on that note, uh, we're going to call it good for the day. Thanks so much for listening. Remember that what you focus on is what you attract and what you intend is what you create. So choose wisely, young Jedis. We will see you next time. So that's it for today's episode of Spirit Guides Podcast. Head on over to iTunes, Apple Podcasts, or wherever you listen and subscribe to the show. Every week, one lucky listener who subscribes and posts a review on iTunes will be entered into a drawing for a $10,000 value grand prize and a private reading with Kelly Sparta herself. Be sure to head on over to spiritguidespodcast.com and pick up a free copy of Kelly's gift and join us on the next episode. Oh.